Well, my name is Aubrey. I'm on the team here at Celebrate, and we are celebrating 20 years today. Can you even believe it? I know it, right? 20 years of amazing things that God has been doing uh, through this ministry and in this community. So this morning is going to look a little different. Uh, we're going to do a lot of celebrating. We're going to take a look back as we have already kind of started to do. We're going to look ahead and we just want to celebrate everything that God has done in between. You are going to get the opportunity to hear from all three of the pastors that Celebrate has had through the last 20 years. We have Pastor Gary Roseboom, who is our founding pastor. Suzanne Vogel, who is our interim pastor, and our current lead pastor, Andrew Schmidt. And the way we're going to do that is through some video clips. Uh, they could not all be here today, um, but we wanted just to be able to hear from them and what Celebrate was like while they were here and the ways that they saw God moving and working in just ways that he can. So, Bill Hybel spoke that evening, and uh, he said something. It was just one sentence, and it just like, that was for me. That's why I'm here. Um, and he said, uh, lost people matter to God. I go, well, I believe that wholeheartedly. One day I was at a meeting with him and he said, hey Gary, would you ever consider doing a restart in Knoxville? And I said, well, John, I don't know what a restart is, first of all. And I didn't know we had a church in Knoxville, Tennessee. And he said, oh no, not Knoxville, Tennessee. He said, Knoxville, Iowa. <laughs> I go, John, you, I said, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard, a Pella boy going to Knoxville. I said, I'm not sure that's going to work. And so I said, well, would you just think about it and pray about it? I said, sure, we will. So George and I, we thought and prayed. We, we even came down here in about February and kind of checked it out. And as we're leaving town, we, we prayed on the car dealership lot and just really decided, no, this is not where God was calling us. And went home, and yet I got no peace out of that decision. And so eventually, over several months, God made it clear that indeed he was calling us to Knoxville, Iowa, to do something radically different, nothing I'd ever done before or tried before, and that's to do a restart ministry. We really began to think and dream because one of the things that I was told when I first got here, there had been a study done of Knoxville. I believe there were 28 churches at the time when, I, when George and I came. And yet statistics said 80% of Knoxville was unchurched. That statistic just, I mean, it's, again, it just, how in the world could a community of 7,500 people with 28 churches be 80% unchurched? And so that lost people matter to God thing, uh, I began to connect some dots at that point that, oh yes, this is what this was all about way back when. And so as we met in a core group, one of the things we constantly asked ourselves, so what, what kind of ministry do we have to be in order to reach that 80%? It's not about us, it's about them. And so that really became part of our DNA of reaching, I think we came up with a mission statement, reaching lost, lonely, broken people. Uh, it became part of our DNA. Uh, we, we wanted to be a place where people invited other people. If your life was a mess, you didn't have to be all put together. You know, you could come. Um, and we were really hoping we would be able to touch a great number of people in that 80%. I think one of the great things that, that happened during, and yeah, I suppose you call it during the build, was just the number of people here at Celebrate who got involved in some way or other, especially painting and, and uh, putting base work around the entire building, you know, it just, a lot of people got involved in that. It was very rewarding to see so many people just pitch in and help. It was very gratifying in that sense. Well, when we looked where First Reformed Church was and the parking and the building itself, it didn't meet any of those three criteria. So we faced, well, what do we do with that building? Um, do we knock it down? Do we give it away? What do we do with it? And I think over time we felt, well, uh, let's think about doing youth ministry there. It's close to the middle school. Um, it might work out for that. And so 
That was the decision with the crosswalk. When I first started um, with, as at the crosswalk with Bruce Refilt, um, it was a really an outreach program in the community. Uh, not a lot of teaching going on, just a lot of loving on kids. I took over the ministry in 2010, and I wanted to try to make it my own, um, where we could reach lost, lonely, broken kids, but also um, uh, have a little more organized chaos. How about that? My goal was to change lives of kids while I had the influence. And so we um, we just loved on kids well, but we also got into, into the Word of God and, and changed their lives. I think the word crosswalk means so much to kids. We, we changed it from the crosswalk to crosswalk because if you ask a kid in town in Knoxville, um, or if you say the crosswalk, they know what that means. It's a building where they can go, have a meal, and be loved on, and not be judged. I remember one particular Sunday where Gary Timmer went up to uh, Henry Benzing. Henry was, uh, I think, chairman of the uh, of the consistory when the decision was made to. to actually have me come and, and do this ministry. And, and I remember Gary Timmer, after about a year into the ministry, he, he asked Henry, he says, so Henry, do you miss old First Reformed? And Henry said, no. He says, look at all the excitement, look at all the kids. No, I don't, I don't miss it at all. And in the early years, you would have to say that uh, it was most of that core group that came over from first that allowed us to find people to do nursery, to do children's ministry, even to begin a praise team. A lot of that came from those folks. So certainly that was a God thing, I felt, uh, in the ministry. It was amazing, I guess, to, to see God touch the lives of people. Judd, Aubrey, Bruce, you know, you all come to mind that uh, in the early years, um, uh, you were either involved or you came early on. And uh, I just seen God do amazing things in all of your lives. You know, you ask yourself, was it worth the effort? Was it worth taking that big risk? Um, uh, yes, yes, certainly. And I was invited to celebrate uh, by one of my best friends who, um, his family was one of the key people in starting Celebrate Up again. He had invited me to his daughter's baptism. And I had really no desire to come to church whatsoever. But out of respect for them, I decided to come I had an encounter with God that morning that truly uh, wrecked me and changed me. And from that day forward, I kind of dove in uh, head first. Um, one of the fun parts of that story is uh, the place I was sitting that morning uh, when I encountered God is where my desk sits today. Uh, so this used to be the old pizza ranch part of the church and now uh, I get reminded of that every day when I come into my office that this is where I met God. And one of the reasons I even said yes to taking such what I considered a huge risk, leaving unknown, uh, doing church like I'd always done it, to being willing to step out and do church like I'd never done before. Um, one of the reasons I was willing to do that is because of the the book um, written by Henry Blackaby. And in that book, he, he said, if you can, if you're dreaming dreams that you can achieve, then you're not dreaming big enough. To really trust God to do things, they need to be bigger than what you can achieve yourself or even collectively at times. And there were several times we kind of had to make those decisions that, whoa, unless God shows up, I'm not sure this is going to work. And time and time again, we would see that when you risk, 
God somehow, some way, you know, shows up and you achieve the dream. And so, yeah, to say, could I envision totally what it is today? No. But did I hope that, yes, someday we would fill that new building? And so 20 years from now, I still hope Celebrate is asking, what do we need to do in order to be about touching the lives of those who don't know yet? What an incredible gift Jesus is. When Gary left, um, it was a really hard season for us. As leaders, as staff, as a congregation, but um, it was especially hard on Gary. Not only was he dealing with pain, physical pain, um, he was having to turn over something that was so incredibly precious to him. But the beautiful thing was, what I remember so clearly in those days, was him standing up here and reminding us um, of his heart for Knoxville. Um, he would remind us on Sundays, so much has been done in the city through this church, through these people, but there is still so much left to be done. So this next song we are going to sing, God of this City, um, it almost was an anthem for us in those days um, because we as a church, we were going through some scary things. We didn't know what was coming, and we had to trust God that not only was he sovereign and in control, but that he had more plans for this city and that he was going to use us to be a part of that. So even if you weren't with us in that season, I want to invite all of you to stand. We are going to sing God of this city together. Let's, let's declare this again over our church and over our city. You know, it was really clear to me that Celebrate from the beginning was designed and there was this vision to be a place where lost people broken people, hurting people could find refuge, could hear the gospel, but maybe more importantly, experience the gospel first. It was one of the things that I found really winsome and attractive about the ministry. And there was this sense that people could be real. They could come in on a Sunday morning wearing whatever they were wearing uh, and hear the good news, but experience the good news through the fellowship, through the relationships, through the just presence of Jesus in people. So I think uh, there were a number of things that struck me. I mean, one was the courage of the people who were leading at that point to stand. It was a hard place, right? Pastor Gary, had done such remarkable work and so much of the ethos and the culture of the church could have been just grounded on him. And when he stepped back, uh, that could have been a huge crisis. And it was difficult and incredibly painful. And yet to watch and to be able to be with a group of leaders who just worked to stand in the complexity and the challenge of that with faith and hope was really, really remarkable. I don't think anybody would say we did it perfectly because you don't do anything that complex perfectly. But I saw the grace of God in multiple ways. And then to watch over time the way that God honored the transition and the ways that people kept trying to stay in and be faithful to the gospel was really, really beautiful. I think it gave me the opportunity to stand in my own leadership in ministry in a church for the first time. Um, it confirmed for me how much I love getting to do ministry uh, in ways that are creative and are able to be authentic and even if they're difficult and chaotic, there where people get to stand in faith together. And I got to watch that in a way that was really, really, really beautiful. And I think created new levels of hope and faith for me uh, that God comes through. I just loved uh, the ministry that Celebrate was doing 
and the emphasis on being real and authentic and creating safe spaces for people outside the church. And it solidified in me, yeah, I want to be about that. No matter what I do next, no matter where I go, I want to be uh, a kind of person and the kind of pastor who thinks about that all the time. I mean, it was so sweet because to see that Andrew was able, like to be able to look at Andrew and say, oh my gosh, this is perfect. Like you are the right person for the, and then to be able to say, I can release it to Andrew. I can release, celebrate to Andrew and, that, and that'll be amazing. Suzanne really wanted to be here with us this morning, uh, but just due to some scheduling things, she was not able to, but I'm supposed to pass on to you that she misses you and she loves you, and she wishes she could have been here with us. Um, if you have been with us for a bit, you will most likely recognize this next song. It's The Great I Am. Um, and I don't know what it is about this particular song, but for me, at least, there is such power um, in worship. When, it, when we sing this song together. I don't know if it's the lyrics. I don't know if it's just the way that as a body we've just kind of grabbed onto this song. But um, it's almost like the heavens open up and God just descends on this place. It also happens to be the song that was debuted on Suzanne's last morning with us, which also happened to be Andrew's first morning with us. So there's a lot of weight and a lot of significance that comes with this song. So I think we have a unique opportunity this morning. Um, it isn't often that we are all in here together in one service, and it definitely isn't often that we're all together in one service and singing this song. So I, f I have just had this stirring in my heart that we are being invited to really, really worship well this morning. Um, lift your hands. Um, get on your knees. This song talks about mountains shaking and demons fleeing at the sound of his name. Um, we've, we've been so blown away by our young people <clears throat> in this last year, our middle school and high school students and the way that they worship. They worship um, authentically and passionately. They just carry this authority. It's been so amazing. So I know we are crammed in here tight this morning, but do we have middle school and high school students here with us this morning? Could you guys stand where you are? If we have some of our middle school and high school, oh good, we do. Cause I'm gonna ask you to do something. If you are a middle schooler, high schooler, college kid, would you guys make your way to the front right here? Just fill in this space. These guys know how to worship. And so I'm asking you guys, youth leaders, if you are here, Clay's here somewhere, he'll come up. Um, youth leaders, youth, would you just fill this space? And I would like all of you to stand as we worship together. But would you guys lead us? this morning and would you follow their lead because they really know how it's done. I am going to pray as we, uh, as we enter into this song. So would you all pray with me? God, you are so good. And it is so fun to look back and be reminded of your goodness and your grace. So God, open the heavens this morning. God, as we worship you for who you are, would you remind us who you are? How big and powerful, God, I pray that mountains would shake this morning and that demons would flee this space. That your name would be glorified high above all other names, God. We invite you here this morning and we worship you for all you've done and all that we know you're still yet to do. We praise you, God, and we do it in the name of Jesus. Amen. I think one thing that I kept putting before God in my, my prayers was just I wanted to be part of something that only he could do. I wanted him to put me in a church where, where he would do amazing things. Celebrate was a church that was um, not just about building a, a big church. It was about how can we make a difference in the community. And that was a huge aspect for us is that we could see Celebrate was doing things in the community. Um, Especially what drew us is that Celebrate had a passion for, for people who didn't know Jesus and bringing them to know Jesus. And beyond that, Celebrate was all about Jesus. And 
we're all about Jesus. You know, there's also that Celebrate uh, has a passion for children and youth and investing in children and youth. And I think that's uh, really important to, to me that a church isn't just, obviously it's important to me because I have so many kids, but also it's just important to me because I think churches just gradually age if they don't stay invested in children and youth and um, young adults. And so that was something that we saw in, at Celebrate. Another one of the things that really drew us to to celebrate was knowing that uh, this these this was a church that prayed. They had set up prayer initiatives in the past. They had done prayer walks. Um, we found out in the interview process that people had been fasting over the selection process, and Camille and I that really um, that really spoke volumes to us. So we're we're just grateful to be a part of a church that prays. Which I think most churches have some version of a hospitality. Uh, team. What makes Celebrate unique, I think, is that there are people here who are willing to sacrifice um, for the sake of whoever we're welcoming in. There's a, there's a being nice to people, there's doing what we think is expected of us, and then there's the people that will actually cook the meals, even when they don't feel like it, actually show up to clean at a funeral thing, who will be here on Sunday mornings, um, and will walk over even though they're a little nervous and introduce themselves to someone that they don't don't know. I think the the willingness to sacrifice for the sake of who's new, who doesn't know Jesus, or who's lonely, um, I think that's what makes a church hospitable. That's what makes Celebrate hospitable. There's a strong sense here that that we aren't just the church when we're at church or around the church people, but we're we're taking the church, we're, we're being Jesus um, wherever we go, whatever neighborhood we live in, whatever business we work with, whatever place we volunteer at, um, that's, there's a chance for us to bring God's kingdom. One of the uh, signs that I, I've seen that I'm reading statistics all the time about what's happening in the church and um, overwhelmingly, uh, church attendance is declining uh, for churches. Most churches experience declining attendance and partly that has to do with people attend less often um, and partly that's people are not attending at all and so celebrates attendance that it's uh, gone up 50% uh, is sort of amazing. It's going against the trend. I think uh, a wonder I've seen is just the amazing generosity uh, at Celebrate and specifically with finances. Um, Celebrate has, we, we have reduced our debt since I've been here by half a million dollars. We've gone under a million in, in the debt we have left, but at the same time we've doubled what's in the, the bank account. And that just comes from lots of people being, being generous. And I think we we started giving 10% of what comes in away outside of, of Celebrate to other ministries. And I, I remember when we gave away $5,000 to other churches building projects, to four different churches in the region. And several of those churches had, Celebrate, had supported Celebrate when we did our building project. Um, and I just remember one of those pastors driving over from a 30 minutes from a different town just when he received the check and the letter from Celebrate just overwhelmed and another um, couple pastors calling from Ames at, at the building project just the the joy of being a church that that's able to give and uh, that we've given to uh, all the churches that are part of the Ministerial Association in Knoxville another year that um, the VBS offerings that that the, the that's certainly been a sign and wonder and that we've been able to to build wells and provide clean water uh, for children in Uganda. Lots of other things we've done, but that particular year was um, well beyond what I thought was, was possible uh, for our group to do. So that'll be another one. We've seen signs and wonders, like literally like you think about in the Bible, in terms of people praying for someone and they get, get healed. Uh, the prayer gathering group, I've lost track of how many times We've prayed for someone in a very specific way, and they, the report has come back that the doctors can't explain what happened, but the person is better now or doesn't need surgery now. And we've had you know, people stand on stage and say, 
uh, this has been going on for six months and then people laid hands and prayed on me and now my vision is restored or my um, headaches are gone that I've had and um, we've had middle school students praying for adults and the adults experience sensations and, and physical healing. We've had high school students pray for each other and there's been physical healings. So um, j just physical healings have, have taken place from when we're praying for, for one another. And, and there's been, I think, one of my favorite, um, one of my favorite parts about being in ministry is that sometimes I get to experience it firsthand, but oftentimes I just get to hear the stories about how someone has been prayed for and they, God has, they know it was God that was part of that prayer. God has given them hope, given them comfort, done something in such a specific way that they know in the core of their being that God's real, God's alive. And that's just starting to happen all the time. For people who haven't been accustomed to it, it still just blows them away every time. But for, um, for us, we just start to see it. It's, we start to almost expect it, and that's really exciting. One of the things our leadership did once uh, several years ago when we were saying, what was God calling or positioning Celebrate for uniquely? What was Celebrate's unique purpose in this next season? And um, we sort of came up with a statement that was going to guide us that we wanted to join God in his work of transforming the Knoxville community. And even though it's not like celebrate is doing these all these things i think celebrate people are dispersed throughout the community and in ways that are making a difference of all the the signs and wonders the thing that gets me most is just when a person comes to know jesus when there's someone that i've been or groups of us have been praying for and all of a sudden they're here at celebrate and and that's what we had been hoping for and longing for, and now, now they're here. Um, and, and then to see, fast forward six months from now, they're not just here anymore. They believe and they want to see people come to know Jesus. They're reaching out. Uh, I don't think there's a sign and wonder that outdoes uh, someone coming to know Jesus, and this church has just seen that over and over. One of the things that I've wondered about is just when did people start coming to celebrate? And I thought about doing like how many started coming within the last year, within the last five years, but it's hard to figure that out in our head. So we'll just go with, with who is pastor when. So if you, if you come to celebrate now, I know we have guests and visitors here, but if you come to celebrate now and you started coming and I was the pastor, would you stand? Okay. Great. All right, you have a seat. If you, uh, the first time you started coming to celebrate was when Pastor Suzanne was the pastor here. Would you stand? Great. All right. You can go ahead and have a seat. And now including, I know enough of you have come because it's the 20th and you don't, you've moved away or something. But if you started coming here when Pastor Gary was the pastor, would you stand? Awesome. All right, go ahead and have a seat. And one last one. If you were here, maybe not, maybe not the, if not the very first Sunday, the very first month that Celebrate had its doors open, would you stand? Can we, can we give thanks to God for our people who've been here? Yeah. Yep. yeah. I, uh, what was it like to be thinking about what would a church look like here in Knoxville before you even knew what the building was or where you'd be? And there's a group of people who are thinking and praying, what would it look like then? I want to really honor uh, Pastor Gary and George um, for just laying down their lives to plant a ministry. And, and along with them for Randy and Amy Buren, Amy's their daughter, and Amy is, was, has been on, was on staff longer than anyone has been, 19 and a half years on staff here at, at Celebrate. So, yeah. And Suzanne Vogel uh, is, a great, is a friend of mine, an incredible leader. I learned, I worked with her for several years and learned a ton from her, and uh, she was what she did in two and a half years was phenomenal in terms of how the Lord used her and her leadership. Having said all that, 
uh, part of what I've been doing in reflecting on these last 20 years is I, if someone would come to mind and I'd think I should bring them up because celebrate would not be celebrate without this person. Or I th- well, what about I should mention this person because the things they've done, the, the way they've welcomed people, they're the one, the sacrifices they've given. And what happened is just like another person comes to mind and another person comes to mind and another person comes to mind. And some of the people don't even go here anymore. And some of the people just started coming here pretty recently. But there's so many different people where I say, this is what Celebrate is about. It's about a person who lives like this, a person who expresses joy like this, a person who cares like this, a person who serves like this, a person who gives like this. This is what Celebrate's about. And I think of person, I think of person, I think of person. And I think it was good. I think it was a good way to tell our story, to have pastors voices come to tell our story, but I want to be very clear about something. Who the celebrate is, is not who the pastors are at that particular time. You are who celebrate is. It's not about a building. It's not about a worship service. It's about people who love Jesus. It's about people who care about the things that Jesus cares about. That's who Celebrate is. And there is one person, though, that I think uh, we need to especially honor, who, more than anyone else, who Celebrate is. I think it goes without saying, but I don't think we should go without saying it. Who Celebrate is, is about Jesus. And this church is who it is because of Jesus. Every time we gather, wherever we gather, Jesus is here. Back when people were praying about what what could a church look like in Knoxville, Jesus already had something in mind. He is the leader of his church. And he has been faithful to this church. And we need to thank him and focus on him. So out of the many, 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 many things that I want to say, I'm going to be merciful to all of you and keep this very short. We have talked about the last 20 years. I just want to take a few moments to talk about now what? Moving ahead into the future after 20 years, now what? And I want to listen to the words of Moses and Jesus to do that. So here's the the deal. Moses, we're going to do a sermon series on on Moses and and the people of God in Exodus starting in March about how they were in bondage and they got moved into freedom and that whole journey and what that looked like. After that has happened, after signs and wonders have happened, after they've seen God move, there is an up and down thing. Things get hard. Where is God? Oh, God's here again, but now we're, we screwed up. And all of this is going on, and they're at a crossroads at one point, and their leader, Moses, it says, the Bible says, he talks to God like a friend, like face to face. He talks to God. He's in a conversation with God. They're at a crossroads. What is next? How's it going to work based on what's just happened? They don't know. And in the conversation, Moses asked the question, who are you going to send with us? He doesn't ask, where are we going? What should it look like? What should we do? Those are the questions I tend to ask. He says, who's going with us? And God, the Lord, says, my presence will go with you. Here are verses 15 and 16. Moses' response after the Lord says his presence will go with you. Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us up from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us? What else will distinguish me and your people from all the people on the face of the earth if not your presence? And then the Lord says, yes, he will go. Now, here's the thing. I don't, where are we going? What do do I think Celebrate's going to look like in 20 years? I don't know what Celebrate's going to look like in 20 minutes. I don't know. I don't know much. But I know one thing, it better be all about God. We need God. The presence, God's everywhere, so what's the deal with this presence? Of course he's going to go, he's going to be wherever you go. But presence with a capital P is a personal presence. Like we know God and we know God knows us. Presence with a capital P is like a powerful, tangible presence where at times we can feel him, at times we see him act in ways that we can't explain it. That is the presence that Moses is asking for. That's the presence I would ask for moving forward. People need to know that God is real, that he's alive, that he sees them, that he cares about them, and not just people out there. We need to know that. 
we can do all kinds of good things. We can go try to reach all kinds of people. But if we ourselves do not know God and do not know his love, then what are we passing on? We need his presence because the world needs his presence. And that gets to the second thing, the words of Jesus. In the middle of April, we will be talking about, we'll be going through a series of acts. And here's Jesus, that just he's died on the cross, he has risen from the grave at this point, he is about to ascend into heaven, and he starts talking to his followers, to the people he had been with when he walked on the earth. He's just about to go, and in his final words to them, this is one of the things he says. Acts chapter 1, verse 8, it says, but you will, he says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He says, he says, you need the Holy Spirit. Who's the Holy Spirit? It's the presence of God, the personal presence of God, the powerful presence of God. He says, you need my presence. When the Holy Spirit comes, that word comes reminds me that Jesus used that word come. He said, come all you who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest. He says, come and follow me. He says, come away with me. He invites us to come into his presence. He invites us to come and know the Holy Spirit. He invites us to have the, receive the Holy Spirit, the presence of God. He invites that. He invites us to come, but he doesn't just invite us to come. He commands us to go. You will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So we come into his presence, but we come ready to go carrying his presence, empowered to bring his presence to people he needs. He says, go and make disciples. Go and preach good news to the, to the poor. Go. Go reach lost, lonely, broken people. Go. We receive his presence, and then we're empowered to bring his presence. It's like we gather up seeking him because we are desperate. We need God. Please, God, come. And then he comes. And when he's here, when we leave, it's like an explosion of his presence going into different schools and different towns and different workplaces going in a million ways. We go carrying his presence. I don't know much, but I know I need Jesus. I still need Jesus every bit as much as when I first gave my life to him. And I know all kinds of people who need Jesus and don't seem to really know him. And that's what we want to do. We want to receive we want to come and receive his presence and we want to go carrying his presence i don't have the worship team come up tonight i just want to encourage you that are part of celebrate church to to come to tonight we're going to worship and pray um you know four years ago we started making three-year goals and we had four pages of goals as a church and we would review them often and by, by the beginning of 2019, most, not all, but most of those goals were, were met. And we've been in a year of listening. So what's, what's next? Well, tonight we're, we're going to talk about where we think is next. We don't have four pages of goals. We have three words and four goals that's going to guide us as leadership. So we'll share those tonight. But mostly tonight is about worshiping and praying for God as we move into the, the future. Celebrating 20 years, but also saying, God, we just want, we want to keep going. And that would be my final thing. And this wasn't really part of what I thought I was going to share this morning, but it, it has come to me this morning and it will not go away. Whether you go here or not, I want to invite you to get in the game. Some of you have poured yourselves out at different stages of your life. Some of you have poured yourselves out for this church at different stages of your life. And at some point, it can just be like, because you've actually emptied yourselves. I want to say, it's time to come back into the game. The world needs to know Jesus.
we start, uh, I could take 20 minutes to thank God for all kinds of things for the last 20 years to Celebrate Church, but instead, could we just all silently, what are we thankful for about Celebrate Church? Just lift up, what are we thankful for? Just tell him what you're thankful for about how God has used this church. So, God, we say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And we say thank you that you invite us to come. We want to re-accept that invitation just to come to be with you, to come to know you, to come into your presence, to know your love. We want to come. God, I especially want to pray for the people that you're reminding, that you're reassigning, that you're re-asking, you're asking for recommitment to go. To go. Would you come and fill with an, a special measure of your grace those who have poured themselves out? at different stages in these last 20 years and need to be replenished, but also it's time to re-enter. Even as we sing this song and make this closing song our prayer, would you be filling your people, preparing your people, that all that's happened in the last 20 years would be multiplied in the years ahead for your kingdom, for your glorious sake many, many times over. And as you do, immeasurably, immeasurably more than we could think or ask or hope or imagine, we will keep celebrating the difference that Jesus makes. It's in his name that we pray all these things. Amen. Beloved Celebrate Church family, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.